I'm just amazed at the fact that they can pack in so much power, so much technology into this little guy. And no, AMD is not sponsoring this video. They're not paying for it. MSI sent this jacket over and it's cold out here, so you know, I put it on. But what AMD actually did was send out the Ryzen 9 5900X for review to the studio, and I'm glad they did. So in this video, let's talk about Ryzen 5000. Let's talk about the Ryzen 9 5900X. This is gonna be a one-stop shop, everything you need to know from the specifications, to what's good, what has changed from the previous generation, what's new. And towards the end of the video, we'll take a look at the gaming benchmarks and I'll give you guys my honest verdict. Should you get the Ryzen 9 5900X, is it worth your money? But with that being said, drop a like on this video, get subscribed for more you know, PC-related content like this, and let's get started. All right, so starting off with the Ryzen 5000, a little bit of, you know, briefing, some introduction. AMD launched four CPUs in the first, you know, Ryzen 5000 announcement. There was the Ryzen 5 5600X, the Ryzen 7 5800X, and there were two Ryzen 9 CPUs. There was the Ryzen 9 5900X, the one I have here, and the 5950X. All of these CPUs are based on the Zen 3 architecture, and they're still on TSMC's 7 nanometer fabrication process. They did not change process nodes, but, what they did was change the price and there was a little backlash from the community that AMD was you know, charging a premium or Intel's pricing. But now I understand, now I get it. So apart from the Ryzen 5 5600X, every other CPU had a $50 price bump and that $50 is a little more in India you know, because of the stock situation. But now I get why they increased the price. It all makes sense now. Let's talk about the Ryzen 9 5900X and its specifications. So this is a 12 core CPU. It has got 24 threads, a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz, a boost of 4.8. And yes, obviously it's overclockable. And this has 105 watt TDP, which might seem a little power hungry at you know, first, but the kind of power this guy packs and the performance it gives, it's totally worth it in my opinion. It's also got a crazy amount of cache, 64 megabytes of level three cache, which is unified. So there's very less latency and that's an upgrade over their you know, previous CCX or compute unit where they had divided the cache into two parts. Let's say you had 32 megabytes, it would be 16 and another 16. And you know, four cores will use the first 16 and the other four will use the second. And there was a lot of latency, but this time around it's unified. So 64 megabytes of cache is readily available to all the cores to use at once. So there's no latency. And another new feature that AMD unveiled was smart access memory, which is kind of gimmicky, but for that you need a Ryzen 5000 series CPU, or, you know, X570 or B550 motherboard. And you also need a Radeon 6000 series GPU. Now what happens when you use smart access memory is the CPU can use the GPU's 16 gigabytes of VRAM to improve performance, to give you more FPS. Basically, it can share the load and process things together. So that's smart access memory, and that's also the new unified cache memory for you. So now getting back to the specifications, there is no thermal solution included in the box. And yes, to overclock and to just use the CPU in your build, you'll need something. You can use any air cooler of your choice or any liquid cooler of your choice. And my recommendation would be to go with NZXT Kraken Z63, which has that sweet little LCD display. It's an amazing cooler. It's really nice quality and it happens to be a premium one. And it'll give your PC that spice that you need in your setup. So that's my recommendation. Now getting back to the CPU itself, apart from the you know, big specifications and the numbers, in terms of thermal performance and power consumption, AMD has done a good job as well. So this is not overheating, this is not throttling, it's staying under you know, decent temperatures at idle as well as under load. And in terms of power consumption, it is not taking extra power without giving extra performance, if that makes sense. It's taking, it's taking enough power and giving equal balanced performance. It's not chewing up power and not doing anything, you know, if that makes sense. It is efficient. They've done a good job on it. And other things that are gonna be noteworthy is that this CPU also supports PCI you know, 4.0. So for future generation graphics cards as well as storage devices, you don't have to worry about it. If you have a PCI 4 you know, ready motherboard, that should be fine. And talking about motherboards, 
The Ryzen 5000 series is supported on B450 boards as well as B550 boards and their X570 boards. So if you have any of those, you don't have to worry about it. But yes, you will have to update the BIOS to use these kind of CPUs. Although I wouldn't put a Ryzen 9 5900X on a B450 board, but if you wanted to, you could do it. And also it supports fast RAM, DDR4, 3200 MHz on the minimum. And yes, it still loves fast RAM as well as you know, dual channel or quad channel memory. So if you can do that and provide that, it will give you better performance. Talking about pricing, this is priced at $549 in the US. And in India, the pricing is varying at the moment because of the stock issues. So I wouldn't quote any price in India as of yet. But yes, it should retail somewhere around that price, somewhere around that conversion from the US price with GST included. But pricing aside, if you can get this at the right price, the performance of the CPU is absolutely amazing. It does a really good job, not only in gaming, but even in synthetic benchmarks, you know, in video editing, content creation, 3D modeling, whatever high end, you know, demanding tasks that you have, you can do live streaming as well as, you know, you can do your work stuff on it. So for gaming itself, it's a beast, but I wouldn't buy the CPU for gaming alone. Yes, it's capable of 4K gaming, 8K gaming. It can push out, you know, high FPS, even on a high refresh rate monitor, like a 240 Hz. Even if you get one of those new 360 Hz monitors, I think this CPU should have no problems in eSports titles at least. But yes, it can do more than just gaming. It can work, it can be a workstation grade CPU. It can be a beast at anything, is what I'm trying to say. Now, talking about performance, Yes, in terms of modern AAA titles or esports titles, whatever it is that you want to play, heck, even if it's Microsoft's Flight Simulator, this is going to crush it. All you need to do is get a good motherboard, you know, give it enough RAM. 32 gigabytes would be my minimum recommendation if you're going for the Ryzen 9 5900X. And you can pair it up with either Nvidia's, you know, RTX 3000 series or AMD 6000 series if you can find one, that is, for the right price. And apart from that, you're good to go. And you know, you'll have no complaints at all in terms of performance, in my opinion. And talking about performance, here's the test bench and enjoy the benchmarks. Then we would be If you will be My favorite song My little melody All right, conclusion time. Should you get the Ryzen 9 5900X? Hell yes. It's a big fat thumbs up from my side. Definitely go ahead and get this if you find it for the right price in stock and build an amazing PC for yourself. You will not regret it. This is a really nice gaming CPU, but as I said, it can do more than that. It's a good, you know, editing, you know, content creation processor as well as live streaming or 3D modeling, whatever it is that you do. And if you have some extra cash on you, you can also get its bigger brother, the 5950X, and that should keep you sorted as well. But if you don't have that kind of cash, you can also go for Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5, which is below it. The whole Ryzen you know, 5000 series is amazing, power efficient, there's increase in performance. And what I'm more excited for right now is the future. Zen 4 and the promises that AMD brings with it and what Ryzen 6000 series is going to bring in terms of performance and value for money and efficiency and that's going to be 5 nanometers. I'm excited. Let me know if you guys are too and that's been it. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy and let me know if you want me to like suggest a build guide or do a PC build with the CPU. We'll see if we can do that as well. Like this video if it was helpful. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. But with that being said, my name has been Yusuf. You guys have been awesome. Stay awesome, keep smiling, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. And we've been working hard. So if you hating hard, it's the last you can fall back. Yeah, yeah, I swear I'm in myself. The top is where I'm gone when I 